this video, I'd like to look at an LC circuit, a circuit with inductors and capacitors. So the first thing I'm going to do is when the, the switch, so here are my capacitors, here's my inductor, and here's a battery and resistor. And when the switch is up, I'm going to have capacitors and resistors. I'm going to have an RC circuit, and I'm going to charge up these capacitors to give them some energy, to give them some charge and therefore some energy. And then I'm going to flip the switch down, and then I'm going to have uh, capacitors and inductors in a circuit, and the battery and the resistor will be out of it. So capacitors sort of store charge and store energy. And an inductor sort of like opposes changes in current. So when we flip the switch down, these capacitors would like to discharge and to do that, they want to form a current, but that uh, current, uh, that there would be a change in the current and that current would be sort of opposed by the inductor. But then as the current gets going and the capacitors discharge, uh, when they're discharged, they're, they're sort of done producing the current, but the inductor then wants the current coming. And so it keeps it coming, even though it's sort of past the point where the capacitors are discharged and starts to sort of charge them in the opposite direction. Okay, so this sort of idea of opposing uh, changes in current that makes an inductor sort of analogous in a mechanical system to a mass. And a, so a mass, if you have a large mass and you want to get it moving, that is difficult. You can do it, but it is difficult. Or if you have a large mass and it's moving, it is difficult to get it uh, stopped. So the, the type of energy, uh, by that analogy, the type of energy associated with inductor is more like a kinetic energy and the energy of capacitors is more uh, stored or potential energy. And when you get uh, a system uh, where the energy is sort of sloshing back and forth between kinetic and potential, then you have an oscillation. And that's what we're going to have here. So we're going to uh, turn on the circuit and flip the switch up to charge the capacitors, flip the switch down, and then it will enter its sort of oscillating behavior, uh, an oscillation. Uh, I'll, I'll sort of redo this uh, oscilloscope's uh, capture sort of live, but you can see it oscillating here. And os something that oscillates is characterized by its uh, amplitude, how, how big of an oscillation it is, and the frequency. We're going to look at frequency. And so the, the frequency is, uh, the theory predicts that it is one divided by two pi, the square root of L on C. And I'm going to be using Excel. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to enter my inductor. I'm going to put it in the base unit of Henry's and the capacitance in the base unit of Farad's and then use Excel to calculate uh, this frequency. And then from the frequency, get the reciprocal of the frequency, which is the period. So the frequency is how many cycles per second and the period is how many seconds in one cycle. So number of cycles in one second and number of seconds in one cycle. So they are, they have that reciprocal relationship. Okay, and here I just did it for sort of one milli Henry or 0.001 of a Henry and one microfarad 0.0000. Um, that's sort of my base, and I sort of know this number, so I know my calculations, right? And then I sort of adjust down here, and that's the sort of beauty of Excel is I can, you know, pull my formulas down and get them for, I don't have to keep recalculating. It will, uh, either if I replace this data, it will update the calculation, or I can just sort of pull my formula down and get a sort of a sequence of uh, calculations done for me. Okay, so again, I'm going to turn the simulation off. I'm going to click in the space. I'm going to click the button up to charge the capacitors down to move into the oscillating part and then stop it and then uh, measure myself a period.
So way back here, I was flat. And then here's the charging of the capacitors. And here's the oscillating phase. And I have here this time base I can play with. I can play with the uh, vertical axis, squeeze it down or stretch it out. Um, that's pretty good for what I have. And then there is the time base and I can sort of squeeze it up or stretch it out. So I think I'd rather stretch it out here. Okay. And then I want to measure a period. So I'm going to go from one peak to the next peak to measure a period of when it's ready to repeat itself. If I were interested in, oh, if I were very interested in accuracy, I'd probably go over, I don't know, five periods in average or 10 periods in average or something like that. I'm just going to, to go one. I'm more interested in the idea than uh, any accuracy in my simulation measurements here. But I put my put one needle at uh, the first a peak, and it doesn't matter then, it's the first peak, and another one at the second peak. And here is down here uh, the time I measured uh, 873 uh, microseconds. Okay, now I have two capacitors here in uh, parallel and capacitors in parallel add. And so if I add those, that is four, five, uh, three, five microfarads. And that's here. Uh, I needed micro was 10 to the minus six. So I needed to so go from 4.5. And then I needed to move that decimal place six places. So if the decimal place were here, it moved it one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's point five zeros and then the four, five. My inductor is 4.4 millihenries, so that was three milli was three places, 0. 0.0044. Here's the calculation of the frequency, the natural frequency. The, the, this thing left on its own oscillates at this frequency of uh, 1,131 hertz, and the corresponding, the reciprocal, the corresponding uh, period is 0. 0.000884 seconds. And then uh, the, the simulation over here gave us the answer in microseconds. So to compare these, I have to uh, convert. Um, so if I were to convert the seconds to milliseconds, I need six decimal places. So if I'm going to microseconds, the smaller unit, then I make my number bigger. And so if I sh move this one, two, three, four, five, six places, I have 884 microseconds compared to 873 microseconds I'm getting out of my simulation. So a pretty fair comparison. So that's what I wanted to show you here. Thank you for your attention.